Okay, um, hello everybody. Uh, so that's Ava, I'm Laura, we work in HR. Uh, hope you're having a good day so far at the open days. We've learned a lot about CERN, discovering all about physics and what's going on here. Be experts by the end of the day. That's when we come in and try to recruit you. <laughs> so uh, we're just gonna present you the different opportunities that you can have working at CERN, uh, whether you're a student or professional. First problem technique. Yeah, so that's our team and uh, recruitment units. So as you can see, women are quite well represented in that team. <laughs> the, the men are even hiding in the back of the picture, but they're there, they're there. Uh, so just the agenda for today, what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna have a little warm up, uh, just asking you a few questions, really easy questions, don't worry. Um, then we're going to show you a nice little video about, about CERN. Uh, then more general facts about CERN, some general information of what we do. And then we're going to focus on the programs we have and the, the jobs in general. And then if we have time, we'll just, you can ask us some, some questions if you have particular questions you want to ask. So, let's get going. Uh, what does CERN mean? The acronym CERN. Does anybody of you know what does CERN mean? Yeah. Exactly. So, just to repeat a bit louder, Centre Européen de Recherche Nucléaire, in English, European Centre for Nuclear Research. So that was an acronym that was uh, created in '52, uh, and uh, nowadays we use more. Uh, we call it more. We refer it to the organisation more by saying uh, European Organization for Particle Physics. Um, yeah, nuclear research was more focused on the nucleus before, but now we have a deeper understanding and we talk more about part particle physics. So, second question. Does anyone of you know when CERN was created exactly? Sorry? Yes, exactly. Do you know the exact date? <laughs> well, actually, it's quite important because it's the 29th of September. It means that next year we will celebrate the 60th anniversary of CERN. Exactly next year. Um, now, what's, what is CERN's core activity? I actually gave you that in CERN uh, in the first, uh, the first question, so that's very easy. <laughs> so, the main activity at CERN? Yeah, fundamental research in, in particle physics. So trying to understand a bit more the universe and uh, understand what's around us a bit better. Do you know what happened in 1989, apart from the Berlin Wall and all that stuff, <laughs> here at CERN? Yep. Exactly. So the World Wide Web was invented by Tim Berners-Lee and was firstly aimed to connect scientists um, all over the world so they can share the information they get in their different institutes and universities. Okay. And last thing, uh, what does LHC mean? Yeah, of course. We don't have anybody from Lausanne saying Lausanne Hockey Club, it's good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so now we're just gonna show you a little video about what it is to have dreams come true at CERN. Is that much? Okay, well, apparently this video doesn't work, unfortunately. Okay, so it doesn't matter, we're gonna keep going. Yeah. There was a small video on uh, what it is to Child dream dreams, about yeah. CERN as a child and then realize uh, you dream and come and work at CERN. Where's the guy? Um, so I'm quickly going to present you a map of CERN so that you better realize where we are exactly and where is CERN because it's on both France and Switzerland. So in yellow you can see the border. Um, at the bottom of the image here you can see Switzerland and here at the top, you can see France. So now we are standing here in Le Rhin, which is in Switzerland, 
and here is the Prévsin site, which is in France. The LHC is this circle, which is 27 meters long, seven kilometer long, for <laughs> and uh, you can see the four experiments, the four main experiments carried by CERN, ALICE, CMS, ATLAS, and LHCB. Maybe you're lucky and you will get a visit and see one of these detectors. Um, so at CERN, physicists work uh, on experimental, uh, on research physics, sorry, and they use uh, huge machines such as accelerators, detectors, and computers. Accelerators are a um, very gigantic machine that are used to collide particles together. The detectors are here to collect the di data uh, produced by the collisions, and all this data will then be sent to computers that will store, distribute, and analyze the, the, the data collected. This is a picture of ATLAS, which is one of the detectors. It's the highest detector we have at CERN. It's as big as a five-story building, so I don't know if you can imagine, but it's, it's quite big. You can actually, if you could just go back. Do you see the man on the picture? Yeah? Yeah. It's pretty small. <laughs> then we have the heaviest detector, which is CMS, which is heavier than the Eiffel Tower. I don't know exactly how many tones it is, but it's very, very heavy. <laughs> This is a CERN data center, the computer center, uh, where we uh, store all the data produced by the collisions and uh, um, analyze after. So at CERN we have, uh, of course, physicists, but we have also a lot of technicians who work in, in various uh, fields of technology. So you have uh, computing, for example, but you also have cryogenics, magnets, uh, material science, radio frequency. So not only physics at CERN. Yeah, and some to give you some key figures about the people here working at CERN. So the staff members, we have about 2,500 people working permanently at CERN, employed by CERN. Then we have fellows, about 500 uh, of them. Uh, they're young graduates coming to CERN um, to get their first experience, basically. So um, that's, uh, that's for just, uh, yeah, after they graduate. Then we have students, so while they're studying, doing um, I don't know, bachelor projects or master projects or doing their PhD at CERN while they study or just getting an experience. Uh, so we have lots of different programs. We're going to talk about them later. Then we have associate and users uh, who usually users, they are um, coming to CERN just to use the facilities. They're not employed by CERN. So they come here. Um, there are really many, many coming all over from all over the world. There are more than 110 nationalities represented at CERN. Uh, so yeah, just to, some information about nationalities. So uh, staff position, uh, fellow and students, is usually um, targeting the people from the member states. So you know that we have 20 member states at CERN. So it's usually towards those uh, the candidates from the member states. Then users, they come from, from all over the world uh, just to come and use the facilities. Uh, in the professional categories, as you can see, we often refer to CERN as physics, the research physics center, which is true. But uh, it's not only physicists at CERN. Actually, they only represent 3% of the population, the CERN staff population at CERN. So mainly what you can see, we have uh, scientists, so applied physicists, engineers, uh, computing sci computer scientists working to CERN that actually make everything work together, um, those, those huge, uh, huge machines and facilities here. Uh, then we have technicians as well, a really big number of technicians, manual work and then office, uh, office workers, administrative uh, people like us um, working at CERN as well. <laughs> so a few examples of, of professions that you may find at CERN, apart from physicists, so you can have firefighters, uh, technical engineers, radio protection engineers, lawyers, translators. So that's just a few examples of what you, can, uh, what you can do at CERN, what professions you have. So now a bit more in details, we're going to talk about the, the different programs. So the fellowship we saw before for, for graduates. Uh, so it's usually in physics, engineering and computing mainly. Uh, you can do that so when you have a bachelor, master, PhD, they usually come to CERN for two to three years employment uh, and they have a very attractive salary and health insurance and uh, training possibilities. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting program to get a first experience. Then we have this technician training experience, which is a pilot. 
actually it's been uh, it's been implemented last year uh, so it's targeting mechanical uh, people doing mechanics electronic electricity mainly uh, you need to have a technical diploma to enter this uh, this program so it's just what is before a bachelor for example if you don't have a uh, an idea of, it, of what it is and the selection is done once per year the committee uh, select select people it's usually up to 20 positions per year so far plan to expand it a bit more but as it's a pilot it's uh, still quite a, quite a low number and uh, you have contracts from one to two years usually then we have Marie Curie program uh, for university graduates, so in physics, engineering, computing, life sciences, they have contracts up to three years. Uh, if you have a master degree or bachelor de or PhD degree, uh, so the the um, CERN actually applies for funding to the European Commission, and they have then projects for postgraduate students or postdoctors. Um, so uh, to work in an international network, you not necessarily work at CERN, you can work anywhere in Europe basically, and what's important in this program is that there is no nationality limitation. So anybody can apply. We have people from China, um, India, everywhere uh, coming, coming on this program. So that's, uh, that's a very interesting program at CERN, very unique program. And of course, attractive salary and, and so on, to dressing package and training possibilities. Uh, then we have technical student program for um, so that's for students doing usually their bachelor, master degrees. They come to CERN for internships from four to 12 months on the CERN side. So just to get an experience or write their bachelor or master thesis, if they have it. Uh, they, they're given a project uh, with a CERN supervisor and then same living allowance to help them in the region and CERN uh, health insurance. And actually this program is online at the moment. So you can apply until the 19th of November. So in applied physics, engineering, computing, or engineering fields, mechanics, electronic. So uh, the doctoral student program is aimed at students who are currently doing their PhD in applied physics, engineering, or computing. Um, the students are enrolled in any member state university, and they will have to work on a project here at CERN, both supervised by their university supervisor and their project supervisor in order to achieve their thesis. So contracts are uh, generally between one and three years. Um, and the next application deadline is also the 19th of November. So if you are a PhD student, you can still apply for this program. The administrative student program is basically exactly the same that the technical student program that Laura introduced before. The only difference resides in the fact that the administrative students will basically work in administration. <laughs> so uh, there are approximately 25 positions every year. And as you can see, the fields are, are, um, are quite various. So you have translation, human resources, uh, law, finance, audiovisual communication and public relations. So you have really a large uh, amount of fields in which you can uh, do your internship. Uh, you have to have achieved already 18 months of undergraduate studies and the application deadline again is the 19th of November if you are uh, feeling like applying at CERN. Uh, the summer student program is a summer program which this year ended yesterday. <laughs> so our last summer student left yesterday. Um, to be precise, we had 158 member state students this year. Uh, they were all students in physics, engineering or computing and uh, to be eligible for that program, you have to have achieved three years of full-time studies at university. Um, summer students have the choice between staying eight to 13 weeks, and uh, they are very lucky because they have the opportunity to follow a full set of excellent lectures given by the best expert in their domain. Um, they have the chance to go to underground visits to see the detectors, to have workshops, and of course they are paid, and they are um, living at the CERN hotel. So if next year you feel like spending your summer here and that you meet the requirement, just apply. It's very worth it, really worth it. Um, in the end, uh, we are uh, presenting the staff member positions, which are uh, around 200 per year. So um, staff positions go from apprenticeship level to PhD level. Um, all vacancies, all current vacancies and job offers are currently available on our website, on CERN job website. 
um, contracts are up to five years and uh, you have training possibilities. So, for example, if you don't know French and you would like to learn French, you have the opportunity uh, when you're a staff member to learn French, for example. So, what do you get when you work at CERN? Well, of course, you're in a, in a physics laboratory, so you get to be at the forefront of te technology in physics. You will also have the chance to collaborate with multicultural and multidisciplinary teams without any political or religious barriers, which is important. You have to feel welcome here at CERN, and it's the case. And you will follow experts in their technical domain, so uh, you will get the best experience in a, in a specific domain uh, by, by, by following the people working here, and uh, it's, it's valuable experience. You will be uh, in a dynamic environment, as I said before, with training opportunities, so in languages or in technical fields, for example. Uh, making valuable and long-lasting contacts from all over Europe. Uh, as we said, we have more than 100 nationalities on site, uh, so you, you get to meet a lot of, uh, of new people, and it's, uh, it usually changes you. <laughs> and as I said already, so you can learn English and French. If you don't know one of these two languages, hopefully you know English. And uh, <laughs> yeah, because CERN is a bi bilingual organization, and English and French are the official languages here. And last but not least, attractive remuneration packages, which is also important, Sarah. So now we're going to show you a small video on CERN. Hopefully it works. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this one. After that. Yeah. This one. Okay. No, it's not spannend. It's a shame that it doesn't work. We tried it before. <laughs> okay, just for a second. Oh my God. I work for a truly unique organization. A genuine collaboration between countries, universities, and scientists. Driven by a common purpose a commitment to create and share knowledge. I am part of immense scientific discoveries, answering some of life's most complex questions and pushing the boundaries of understanding and imagination. Experts from every field come here to share in this ambition. I am able to work creatively. I can trust and depend on my colleagues and collaborators from around the world. History is being made here. The excitement is tangible, inspiring, day after day. It is the only place in the world that you can do this work in this way. CERN, take part. So actually, that, that presentation that's been made in-house, so all the people you see in this presentation actually work at CERN. And, uh, and even the music has been made by a recruiter, one of uh, our, our team member. So uh, see, we value other things that you may bring to the, uh, to the organization. Uh, so all we said before, uh, you can uh, all on the programs, on the jobs, um, you can find everything on the website. So it's cern.ch slash jobs. Just go there, um, apply if you feel like. <laughs> there are, so it, all the information you, you may find there. Um, all applications have to be made online, so just, uh, just click on the apply button and, and you'll, be, you'll be there. 
And you can also follow us on the social media. So we have a Facebook page, Twitter account, LinkedIn, where we post jobs, and uh, YouTube, where we have lots of videos about the recruitment process, or the video, you can find the video you just saw, or the one you missed at the beginning <laughs> that didn't work. So, um, so yeah, you, you have lots of way to find us and, and follow us what we do. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot and uh, hope you will enjoy your day at the Open Days, learn a lot and discover a lot of new things. We still have 10 minutes for questions in case some of you have questions. Nobody? It's good. No. It was very clear. <laughs> no question on programs, no. Anyway, if you, if you feel like uh, if something comes to your mind later on, we have an HR uh, stand in building 40, so it's just um, from the restaurant. If you just cross the road, there's a big new building, so we're just in there uh, with four people uh, giving you information about the programs, and if you have more questions, you can always go there and ask there. Thank you. Have a good day.